Okay, folks, Mike's Instant Movie Review saw a funny uh, independent film last night. Should you go see it? Should you go not? Dad and stepdad, I say yes. I say for most audiences, this will be a fun movie with some heart. Uh, there's no graphic violence. There's no graphic sex. Uh, there's there's a fair amount of, of swearing, but probably less in my less swearing in the movie than will be in this review by the time we're done. But I thought the movie was very fun, very human. Uh, what's it all about, folks? Well, there's a couple, a, a couple of couples, I guess. Uh, basically, we start off with Jim and his ex-wife Susie have a son together, Branson, and um, but they've divorced. And now... Uh, Susie is off with a new guy that I believe she's officially married to, uh, Dave, and now they're the couple. And so apparently Branson, the 13-year-old son, is being raised by uh, Susie and Dave, the stepfather, and, you know, the, the biological father, Jim, has occasional, uh, you know, like maybe, I don't know if it's part-time custody or the weekends or whatever the fuck. The, it appeared to me that the stepdad, that the son, Branson, lives with mom and stepdad for the most part, and dad is like a, a visiting father type, but I could be wrong. But he's very active in his son's life. I'm making this sound like a fucking drama, but it's not. It's a comedy. And the first kind of tip of the hat that it is a comedy is that the 13-year-old son is probably played by a 25 or 30-year-old man, which is funny because the, the guy, and he does exactly what you should do in this situation. He plays it straight. Whoever the actor is, I, I don't have his name memorized, but the guy who's like probably 25 to 30 in real life, I mean, he still looks like a young guy, but he's definitely not 13. Uh, he plays it without any goddamn wink and nods, uh, if you ever watch Saturday Night Live and they're also impressed with themselves that they laugh and break character in the middle of a goddamn skit. And uh, there's there was one where, uh, what's her name? Uh, the fucking chick from the movies, Mean Girls. Uh, she used to be the big bombshell. She got to be a cokehead. They were doing this, uh, they were doing the fucking, uh, who's that, kid? Debbie Downer at fucking Disney World. And, uh, the, 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 the mean girl's chick, Lindsay Lohan, was in it. And and there's like fucking Jimmy Fallon and Horatio Santez, whatever happened to him, by the way. And they're doing this fucking scene of Debbie Downer at Disney World. And, you know, Fallon, of course, is laughing because that's what he does. Because Jimmy Fallon has to laugh at every fucking thing. Uh, but they're all kind of breaking character. And I can, there's even, there's a moment in there, if you watch that scene, where, um... Lohan, she's kind of forcing herself to laugh. Like, because the other characters, the other actors in the scene are getting cheap laughs from the live audience that they're breaking character and laughing. So Le Lohan feeds into that because there's a moment where it's pretty obvious that she really wasn't needing to break character, but because her co-actors, colleagues there were getting cheap laughs from the fucking Mark audience to laugh... That she decided to break character and laugh to get her own cheap fucking cheapo laugh. So that's what you don't goddamn do. <clears throat> For me, anyway. You know what I mean? Like, if you're trying to be funny, you're usually not. So we go back to this goddamn thing. Um, and Bronson, the guy who played Bronson uh, did a great, or Branson, I should he, he did a great job. He did a great job because he played it like he was serious to play this 13 year old. And by the time the movie's over, you you kind of forgot that it's like, oh, that's a, a joke or a gimmick that this guy's like 25 or 30 in real life, whatever the fuck he is. Now, the other kind of comedic element is that dad and stepdad, Jim's dad and stepdad, Dave, <clears throat> they're basically look like fucking the same guy. <laughs> There's about a five inch, you know, four or five inch height difference that stepdad has, which was pretty smart in casting. And Actually, stepdad has got pretty fucking vascular forearms, too. So physically, he might be a bit more impressive uh, than, than our standardized dad, Jim. Uh, and then there's like a funny little moment when like uh, they're talking about what they do for a living. They, you know, these guys, uh, the, the whole idea is 
the dad, the stepdad, the mom, and the son are all going to stay in this Airbnb in the middle of nowhere together uh, for the weekend. And isn't that going to be fun? Because we're trying to give little Branson a normal life childhood. We're trying to give Branson the idea that we're all on the same team, you know, squad goals and all that horse shit. So I thought that was a good setup, and it's pretty smart. Like, this is how you film a low-budget movie. Um, but with, you know, you have human relationships. You don't need Vin Diesel blowing up Charlize Theron in Italy to make a good movie. <laughs> so we move forth. Uh, the movie was good. Uh, so then the whole, they're, the arguing, the dad, I mean, that's the whole point of the movie is, who do you love more, dad or stepdad? Kind of like, if you remember Step Brothers from years ago or, or whatever the fucking movie with Will Ferrell and the guy whose name no one can remember. Uh, but, you know, the Brothers movie, Step Brothers, this movie, human relationships. <clears throat> and these guys do a really great job with this. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of boast and they brag that a lot of this was improv. Maybe. I'm sure that there was a script. And I'm sure with the, the wonders of editing... They could make the comedic beats tight, but these are just funny fucking actors. I mean, they're just good actors that are funny people. Uh, so what else? So the dad and the stepdad are kind of fighting for the attention of, of the poor kid, Branson. You feel for the kid because he's stuck in the middle. These two asshole guys are trying to make him love them more than the other one. And uh, then we go through all this shit and uh, the revelations. And then a big revelation is, guess what? Stepdad might be on the way out, too, because Susie, the wife that we just hear on the phone so far, she's kind of getting sick of stepdad's ass. So now poor stepdad, you know, and this was an interesting part of the movie. Who's the protagonist? Who's the antagonist of this movie? It's kind of hard to figure out. But stepdad is kind of getting pushed out of this family anyway uh, because he's disposable. And Susie seems to have a bit of a wild heart. And uh, she'll go where the grass grows greener and she'll go... Uh, you know, wherever she wants. And so it's very interesting. Uh, I don't know how else to say this, but there's a very funny scene about the concern uh, that Branson might be a potential bestialist. Uh, there's a, just funny, I guess you'd have to watch the movie. Uh, it's hard to go into all the details, but basically they find this, you know, drawing. And this is where I got a little bit lost because there's a there's like a drawing of a f of sexy fox as they call it in the end credits to me it looked like a professional animation that the kid downloaded from the internet but what they're trying to say is that the fucking kid branson drew this fucking fox and then their you know dad especially is concerned he's wondering if his son is masturbating to thoughts of the fucking fox so the two dads try to have this very serious conversation about masturbation and puberty and so forth with Branson, and he's totally uncomfortable. And that's where the, the Branson guy deserves a lot of credit, uh, you know, because he's a good actor. He's suffering through this scene with these two men trying to... And, and, and the other part of it is that these two guys, father and stepfather, they have different parenting uh, styles. Like stepdad is much more kind of, hey, brother, you know, hey, not brother, but hey, hey, man, you know, hey, touchy-feely, kind of, I'm with you, and and dad is, is step, regular dad's just more like a real dad, you know, so I like that conflict, I liked that, you know, stepdad is trying to be the buddy, and, and uh, the regular dad's trying to be the authority figure, and then the mom comes in, and uh, the mom character was interesting, she was not what I was expecting, um, but I think, think, think that's good because both of these guys are kind of traditional, you know, boring white guys. And then this woman comes in, the mom, and I don't know what I was expecting, but she's got very short hair. Uh, she seems like she might be a vegan cook of some kind. Um, and uh, she's kind of more like the Earth Mama, you know, like the Janis Joplin type. Um, she, she ends up talking to poor Branson about uh, fucking masturbation. That's even more... Uh, not, I don't know if it's more uncomfortable, but it, go, it goes to some weird places with uh, beanie babies and so forth. So we're getting into the weeds of this shit. Uh, but overall, I mean, like I keep saying, the human interactions, the dad, the stepdad, everybody's doing things. Um, the, the movie 
is good. Uh, what the people that I were watching this movie with uh, were chuckling and giggling more than I was. I mean, I was laughing, but these people are really into it. Uh, so, I mean, I think that if you get an opportunity, it's a movie that could play f fine on the home TV. Typically, when you see me do these reviews, I'm always telling people, go to the theater. The movies are better on the theater. The big screen, the big noise, the big audio. But for this movie, you could watch it at home. Uh, will this become a cult classic? Probably, in some regard. I mean, I'm not sure how big the cult will be. But it, it was fun, and I give them credit for making a good movie. So uh, there you go, folks. I guess one of the guys in this thing, the guy that played the dad, was also in another movie I just reviewed, uh, uh, Yelling Fire in an Open Theater, or Yelling Fire in an Empty Theater, trying to get the goddamn title right. Too many words in your fucking movie title. Yelling Fire in an Empty Theater. That one, uh, that review is going to be up here today or whatnot. And so on and so forth. Now this, uh, you might be wondering, well, gee whiz, what am I watching? This is one Mike Messier, the straight to cameras, uh, me and you discussing film, me talking, you listening, hopefully. Uh, also, if I have life rants, if I have things I want to bitch about, I'll come on here and bitch about them. If you have uh, things you want me to topic, take, I mean, I can't take on every topic, but if you have a few thoughts. Now, you're looking at the subscriber count, and you're saying, well, gee whiz, Mike, you're such an interesting guy. How come your subscriber count is so low? Well, that's because this is a new channel. <clears throat> this channel is only a couple of months old, uh, and most of my stuff, the backlog, all types of fun stuff, is over on one pro wrestling and sports fan YouTube channel. Yes, one, the number one pro wrestling and sports fan YouTube channel. You'll see it there's like a couple of thousand videos. Uh, a word I hate, my film reviews from previous years, all types of fun stuff. Uh, but the stuff that was kind of dominating that channel was the wrestling stuff. So I decided to break up my YouTube presence into three channels. That one will now be dedicated to wrestling and sports, if I have sports uh, things to say, or, or whatever the fucks. And over here, you're going to have these film reviews, my life rants moving forth, and so forth. And then there's one more channel you should be aware of. One man and a camera films. Now, if I had my druthers, this is the one you'd all be going to, because this is where you see me making my goddamn films. I mean, no offense to these other assholes, but I feel that I have 12 screenplays, feature-length screenplays, that I've written that are pretty much better than most of the goddamn shit that I'm watching on the screens. But that's okay. I'm not bitter. Uh, but these uh, fucking things, <clears throat> short films, my feature film, Blood Sugar Sedace, One Man in a Camera Films, go over there, The Impeccable is a good one, Disregard the Vampire, Mike Messier documentary is a great one, award-winning, 65 fucking awards in films, still don't have a goddamned uh, contract with MGM Studios like Charlie Chaplin in 1938. Anyway, dad and stepdad, I give it a thumbs up and another thumbs up. Good movie, gentlemen. Good job, Branson.